Welcome to Electro Online. The next form that we need to learn how to factor is the x squared minus y squared form, or otherwise known as the difference of squares. In other words, x is squared, y is squared, and we're subtracting the two, so that means the difference of squares. And sometimes we have something that kind of looks like it, but not quite. It's mainly the difference of squares in disguise, which means that we first must write in that form if it's not already in that form. So we're going to show you how to do that. And sometimes before we can even do that, we must first factor out a common factor. So here's some examples that we need to work through. But first of all, why is it that the difference of squares can be factored to be x plus y times x minus y when this is the difference of the squares? Why is that? Well, the best way to find out is to multiply them back together to see what we get. So let's go ahead and do that x plus y multiplied times x minus y, so we'll use the distributive property. We're going to multiply the first x by both the x and the negative y, and the y by the x and the negative y. So when we do that, we get the following. So this is equal to x times x, which is x squared, x times a negative y, which is a minus xy, y times a positive x, which is plus xy, and y times a negative y, which is a minus y squared. Notice that the two middle terms, they cancel out, which means we're now left with x squared minus y squared. And that is why when we have the difference of squares, we now know that we can simply factor it to be equal to that. But sometimes, like I said, we get it in a form where it doesn't look like it's a different squares, but it actually is. For example, 64 is basically 8 times 8, so this can be written as x squared minus 8 squared. And once you've written it like this, now you can write it as x plus 8 times x minus 8. So this is the factored form of this. You may not have realized it until you realize, oh, okay, 64 is 8 squared, so I can write it like the difference of squares. How about this, 4a squared minus 9b squared? Well, that can be written as the quantity 2a squared minus the quantity 3b squared. Now you can factor that and write it as 2a minus or plus 3b, doesn't matter what order you write it in, times 2a minus 3b. And so this is the factored form of this. Again, it may not have looked like the difference of squares until you rewrite it. And then sometimes you need to factor out a common factor. For example, in this case, when you factor out a 3, you get the following. This is equal to 3 times well, let's see here, 3 times 36, 3 times 3 is 30 is 90, 3 times 6 is 18, that's correct. So 3 times 36 x squared minus 9y squared. So now, if you take a look at that, 36 is 6 times 6, and so 9 is 3 times 3. So this can be written as 3 times 6x squared, whoop, not plus, but minus the quantity 3y squared, like this. And then you realize that's the difference of squares, which could be factored as follows. This can be factored as being 3 times, that would be in this case, 6x plus 3y times 6x minus 3y, like this. And of course, then you realize, well, actually, I could have factored out some other things that would have made it a lot better. I could have factored out a 9 from both cases. And if I had done that, I would have written this as, this can factor out another 9, so that would mean 9 times 3, which is 27 times, that would be 4x squared minus y squared, like this. And then you realize, ah, okay, now that I've also factored out 27, I can actually have done this a little bit more appropriately. And then I can say, okay, this is equal to 27 times the quantity 2x squared minus y squared, like that. And then I again realize that's the difference of squares, so this can be written as 27 times 2x plus y times 2x minus y. And essentially, if you had factored out a 3 and a 3 out of the other two binomials, then you would have ended up with the same result. So sometimes you need to look carefully at what the common factor is, factor it out, and now what's remaining, if it looks like the difference squares, then you can use this technique as well. And that's how we go ahead and factor the difference of squares.